Let's go to Proverbs chapter 13. Proverbs chapter 13. Verse 4 says, it says, a sluggard's, a sluggard's appetite is never filled, but the desires of the diligent are fully satisfied. A sluggard's appetite is never filled, but the desires of the diligent are fully satisfied. Look at how the word of God is dealing with two types of people, the sluggard and the diligent. The sluggard are people that can be stopped. The spirit of procrastination dominates a sluggard. If it is the spirit of procrastination that dominates a sluggard, obviously the diligent have a different quality other than procrastination or being stopped. The diligent are those that are untouched by the devil. Receiving the anointing of diligence is receiving the anointing of wealth. If you receive diligence, you receive wealth. Diligence means that divine weapons will never go unused in your life. Wisdom door. Diligence means that divine weapons will not go unused in your life. Diligence means that whatever weapon is used will continue to be used no matter how you feel. <laughs> Diligence means that a demon spirit will be disrespected by you. If you take it, let's write it down. Diligence means that a demon spirit will be ignored when it attempts conversation with your mind. Diligence means that evil spirits are threatened by your presence. They're intimidated by your presence. Because even diligence is a conversation with the satanic kingdom. It tells the conversation, the conversation says you can't touch this. Diligence is a transaction for qualification of greater anointing. I'm going to say this again. Diligence is a transaction for qualification for a greater anointing. The Lord said something to me that, that was profound to me. He said, son, when I came underneath attack, everybody left me. I only had 12. That are called disciples. He says, son, when you when you when you go underneath attack, your ministry double. I said, Lord, well, why is that? He said, it's the greater works anointing. Oh my God. <sighs> Diligence. It taps into higher realms of God's power and glory. Diligence shows God that you have credibility. Diligence is the intelligence for fruitfulness. If you want to be fruitful, meaning be full of fruits, you have to love diligence. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 4 says, the desires of the diligent are fully satisfied. 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 
If you receive diligence, you're going to receive whatever you desire. I'm going to say this again. The desire of the diligent are fully satisfied. Proverbs chapter 13 verse 7 says, One person pretends to be rich, yet has nothing. Another pretends to be poor, yet has great wealth. Wow. Proverbs 13, 7 says that one pretends to be rich and have nothing. That's the person that, that will boast in materialistic things, but don't have the presence of God. And then it said another pretends to be poor. That means that this person is not looking to be esteemed by people. See, you, you, you need Prophet Joshua to, to, to elaborate on Proverbs. Because the wisdom that I'm going to give you from this wisdom is wisdom. <laughs> Another pretends to be poor. This one pretends like they don't know. They act like they don't need the spotlight on them. They pretend to be poor. They're not poor, but they pretend to be poor. Why? Because they, they lack the need for man's approval. Did you catch that? Poor means lack. They lack the need for people's applause. They lack the need to have satanic attention or have attention from toxic people. They pretend to be poor, yet they have great wealth. They act as if they don't have much. They act, they act like, you know, they, they're not trying to boast and esteem their self in front of you as if they're greater than you, they're better than you, they're 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 in a humble place. The reason why they're pretending to be poor. Is because they know that everything that they have produced was because of the Holy Spirit inside of them. So they pretend to be poor because they know that the reason why I have this, the reason why I, 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 I am accomplishing this, the reason why I know this is because of the Spirit of the Lord, the hand of God on me. It says they pretend to be poor but have great wealth. Say, Father, I receive great wealth. 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 The anointing of great wealth is moving on me. I, I decree great wealth. I decree great wealth on my path. I decree great wealth on, on, my, on my life, on my season. Great wealth, great wealth, great wealth. In the name of Jesus, I decree the word. Great wealth be upon me. Great wealth be upon my day. Great wealth be upon my finances. Great wealth be upon everything that concerns me. Now, why would the word say great wealth? Because there's levels to wealth. And that's the, that's the exciting thing about sowing. That's the exciting thing about living for Jesus. That's the exciting thing about following the spontaneous instructions of the Spirit of God. Is that there is great wealth. There is measurements to wealth. There are dimensions to wealth. And there are heights to wealth. There are ascension Zones for wealth, ascension zones. It says, one pretends to be poor yet has great wealth. That's what Jesus did when he came to the earth. He pretended like he was poor, but he was great wealth. When the blood was shed, the anointing of great wealth. The blessing of Abraham, 
is the anointing of great wealth. Give and it shall be given. You get to entertain great wealth. Angels for great wealth be upon you right now. You receive it? You receive it? Angels for great wealth be upon you right now. Look what the word of God says. Proverbs 13, 8 says the rich can pay a ransom for their lives. But the poor won't even get threatened. A rich man can pay a ransom for his life. I want to say this, that there's a realm of riches that can cause you to escape situations. A part of your salvation and your deliverance that comes from the Lord Jesus as your savior is that great wealth, great riches, it helps you escape certain attacks and oppositions on earth. It defends you. Why don't you think the devil wants you to get large money? Because large money is a protection plan from the father. We're not dealing with social security. We dealing with sonship security. Sonship security is a power that's given to you constantly to trample over the serpent and scorpion. A power that's given to you to cast out devils. It's a power given to you to pray in new tongues. It's a power given to you to receive the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. That through his poverty you be made rich. Sonship security is better than social security. Because when you're led by the spirit, the spirit going to lead you into wealth. The spirit going to lead you into abundance. The spirit going to lead you into better health in your body. Holy Spirit, just lead me. I, 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 I follow you. Holy Spirit, just lead me. Because when the Holy Spirit leads you, the Holy Spirit going to lead you into things that will feed you. Proverbs chapter 13 verse 10 says this. Where there is strife, there is pride. But wisdom is, is found in those who take advice. Where there is strife, there is pride. But wisdom is found in those who take advice. Seek the advice of God. Seek the advice of of your king. It'll protect you from pride. It'll protect you from strife. Strife is really wrestling against the spirit of God. Saints, you ever seen two people in strife? They, not, they may not even be saved. But the reason why they in strife is because they're wrestling against the spirit of God. Because the Spirit of God wouldn't want them to keep on going like that. You see what I'm saying? So even strife in the in, in, in the bosom of both wick, two wicked people is still a wrestling match against God. Remember there was a two harlots. The two harlots were standing in front of Solomon. 
But those two harlots, even though they were not saved, one of those harlots was wrestling against God to lie and say that that was her child. Because God didn't want her to do that. So God revealed to Solomon what to say to reveal how she was fighting against God to get that other woman's child. So all strife is really a fight against the Holy Spirit. Even if two people are not of God. And it talks about how there's, there's wisdom in getting advice. You get the advice of a king. You get the advice of a man of wisdom, a, a, a prophet assigned to you. Sometimes people can be anointed and still give you wrong advice because they're not assigned to you. If you're not assigned to me, even what you know is not going to edify what I need to know right now. Even if you're anointed, if you're not assigned to me, what you advise me on cannot bring me to the full totality of the will of God because that stream for the will of God is in who is assigned to me. The anointing of Ruth is to discern who you're assigned to submit to. The anointing of Ruth. Ruth could have turned to anybody and said, your people shall be my people. Your God shall be my God. But she knew that Naomi was with the will of God. Watch this. Boaz was in Naomi's womb. Even though he was alive, he was in Naomi's womb. So the only way that Ruth could get to Boaz is through Naomi's womb. So Naomi's womb has to flow with instructions to Ruth. And while Ruth is receiving the instructions from Naomi's womb, she also receives Boaz because it's all in the womb. Somebody touch your neighbor and say it's all in the womb. <laughs> Is all in the womb. Remember this. That everybody. Your life has a tomb. And it has a womb. And I want to add on a third one. It has a room. The tomb. It separates you from God. The womb. It teaches you God. The room. Is the favor of God. 